Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Chuan Hua Chen. Uh, I'm the senior director of uh, architecture division in Andes Technology. And uh, in this session, I will uh, give a brief status update of the RISPI P extension test group. And uh, let me reiterate the uh, charter of the test group. Uh, the charter is to define and ratify uh, excellent uh, PEX-CND DSP extension instructions operating on uh, excellent uh, bit integer, uh, general purpose integer register for embedded uh, RISC-V processors. And also we would like to define uh, compiler intrinsic functions uh, that to be, can be used uh, in high-level programming languages. And I'm the chair and the co-chair uh, is Eric uh, Flamen from uh, Green Waves Technology. The P extension proposal. Okay, uh, let me briefly talk about the feature of that. Uh, the proposal is based on the ND Star V3 DSP ISA and uh, it used uh, RV32 and RV64 XLens GPRs. Currently, we have already defined uh, for these two architectures. And uh, it supports saturation and rounding, and uh, it uh, supports fixed point and uh, integer data types. And the CINDY instructions uh, also supports 8-bit to 16-bit and 32-bit element size. And uh, we also have some uh, so-called partial or non-CINDY instructions that are operating on 8-bit uh, uh, to 64-bit data types. For RV32, uh, and uh, instructions in different architecture is a little bit different. For RV32, we have 64-bit signed and unsigned addition and subtraction instructions. And also we have 64-bit uh, addition uh, with 16-bit and 32-bit multiplication uh, instructions. Uh, why we use uh, GPR instead of a uh, separate uh, register state? Yeah, because we choose uh, this approach because we think this is a more efficient and lower power solution uh, for embedded systems. Uh, running applications in uh, various domains such as uh, audio, uh, speech processing, uh, like IoT sensor data processing, uh, wearable uh, devices, Etc. And uh, we think this is a right approach to address the need for high performance uh, general code processing uh, as well as uh, uh, digital signal processing in those domains. And uh, this is an illustration of uh, for RV32, uh, what's a CMD, 16 bit CD instructions. It basically will complete. Uh, two operations, 16-bit operations in one instruction. And uh, these are the supported uh, operations, include uh, addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, uh, min, max, etc. And this is a uh, illustration of 8-bit uh, safety instructions. It will complete four operations in one instruction. And these are the uh, there are similar operations supported, but not exactly the same. It depends on uh, the usage case. Uh, here, I will show you some uh, of the complicated instructions in the instruction set and uh, its benefit. Uh, so we have a 16-bit type a reduction uh, of MAC operations. Uh, that will complete two 16-bit multiplications and uh, two uh, addition or subtractions, and also it will do a Q31 value range saturation. Uh, there are a lot of operations involved in this instruction, and so when we compare with a uh, baseline operation, it has uh, using operation count, we have a six times of uh, benefit. And then in RV64, we uh, basically duplicate the, uh, the operation, okay, and make this do uh, twice. And when compared with the baseline operation, now we have 12 times of uh, uh, benefit. And this is uh, another instruction that uh, will complete uh, two 16-bit multiplications and do two 64-bit additions. And in this operation, there's no need to do uh, saturation. 
Okay, when we compare this uh, using a real function, uh, q15.product function, uh, and then that not only use this instruction, but including uh, the low stores, uh, other instructions to do the function. But by using this instruction, we get a 2.6 uh, performance advantage in RB32. And in RB64, at this time, we didn't duplicate uh, the operation. We basically add you know, four, we do four 16-bit uh, multiplications and together, and then we add them together uh, to 64-bit result. So this time, we get a 3.6 times performance advantage. And when considering 8-bit operations, uh, in RB32, we also have this 8-bit uh, uh, reduction operation uh, will well, complete four multiplications and four additions together and add the result uh, to 32-bit. And when we're using a Q7 dot product function, we get a 3.4 times per performance advantage. And uh, in RB64, uh, in order to reduce the latency of the instruction, we didn't just directly, you know, uh, when we do a uh, a bit multiplications, after that we didn't directly add them together. We also uh, separated and into two uh, duplicated operations, and this basically will reduce the latency of the instruction, and it won't uh, hurt performance. That uh, it actually it will you know through software you can create two threads of a computation, and basically have the similar performance of uh, the instruction that you will add eight together. So when using a real function on Q7 dot product, we get a 7.7 .7, uh, performance advantage. So uh, talk about 64 data types. Okay, in RB64, uh, it's a natural data type. Okay, uh, but the 64-bit data type is important for uh, compilers to automatically generate DSP instructions in uh, DSP benchmarks. So we think 64-bit data type is important, but in RB64, you don't have to uh, do anything special, okay, because the register is already 64-bit. But in RB32, uh, it's not a natural data type. We have to find a way uh, to support that. So uh, the solution we choose is to uh, use pairs of GPRs uh, on RB32, okay, to support this data type. Okay, the 64-bit operand type uh, is just an interface in the specification uh, instruction. So, uh, in the RISC-V philosophy, you know, uh, people may think that it's easier to uh, use, uh, to, to build a register file with two read, one write, instead of more report. But uh, even with this instruction, you can still uh, use a two read, one write register file but with uh, multiple, multi-cycle reads and writes to support this instruction and uh, can support this data pipe and still get performance advantage uh, over uh, using software uh, to uh, compute the 64 uh, data type operations. And uh, let me show you a few performance examples uh, here. This is a real uh, benchmarking result. And uh, we have benchmarked this on a DSP library uh, that includes uh, more than 200 functions and in eight uh, different categories. Uh, and uh, on average, uh, for RV32, we get uh, 1.82 times uh, speed up. And for RV64, we get uh, an average of 2.5 speed up. And on uh, most important DSP, category like filtering, okay, we uh, also get uh, about two point something times performance advantage. And the maxima you can see uh, in the filtering category, you know, we, in RB32, RB64, we get four or five times of performance advantage. And uh, this slide is to show you the importance of uh, compiler automatic generate uh, DSP instructions. In this uh, MP3 decoder, uh, we just use compiler optimization without hand tuning. For RB3, we get a 64% uh, cycle reduction and a 23% uh, 
reduction for RV64. The current uh, P extension status is that uh, we have uh, uh, released a P extension instruction proposal spreadsheet for test group members to review. And uh, we are currently still benchmarking on uh, uh, various uh, applications such as audio uh, speech codecs and neural network uh, applications. And uh, in those applications, more than 100 instructions are used. And currently, we are, uh, the next step in our plan is to release a detailed instruction operation specification and also release a uh, tool chain and a simulator for um, the test group members to evaluate and evaluate these instructions. Thank you. So any questions? Uh, currently, it's an uh, ISA spec, and uh, the PPA needs uh, an implementation. Yeah. So basically, we are also doing some ex uh, some uh, implementations for that. Yeah. I, I think once that's ready, it's available information to share. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not yet packed up. It's not yet packed up. Uh, the implementation. Uh, usually, you know, uh, it, it's not yet. Yeah, it's not yet released. Yeah.